Today we are going to the Weta Workshop, which is in the heart of Wellywood. No, Wellington, believe it or not, has a fair few movie studios in the Miramar Peninsula, which is just outside Wellington City. You can just get a bus there. This is where a lot of the behind the scenes to The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were made. Um, also, all the props, all the costume, the special effects, everything. Weta is huge in New Zealand. And that's not all, they've done loads of different blockbusters. They've done Avatar, they've done District 9, iRobot, The Avengers, Last Samurai. No one's seen Last Samurai. The entrance of the Weta Caves just kind of put you in that spirit. And then you get in, and straight away, you're greeted by one of the most beautiful gift shops I have seen in my entire life. The ceiling is full of frames that reminisce old and newer movies that have been in some kind of way worked yeah, on by the Weta Studio. All the props are just a nerd fest. A lady is walking around and saying, hey guys, you guys want to go watch a movie? It's like a 20 minute, 25 minutes movie. It's about the Weta workshop and the work here and this and that. It's completely free. So you're getting it's run on every half an hour. The cinema itself looks gorgeous. You get on one side, you get a lot of old props from Narnia. And on yes. the other side, you get a lot of old props well, from the Lord of the Rings. And there's like two fires burning and then a big screen right on top. And the movie goes over 25 minutes of the whole history of the Weta Studios and all the projects that have been involved. I'm a Lord of the Rings nerd, so I am really happy to see this. And Robin is just a general movie nerd anyway, so this is perfect for us. We are taking a two o'clock tour. In the Weta Workshop, they are under contract with film and movie studios that own the right of the prop that they're showing us. So because they don't own the right of it, we can't um, film it. So all the visuals that you are seeing today have been taken from the mini museum at the Weta Caves and their gift shop. There's about 20 people on this tour. Our tour guide comes to meet us in the cave and just shows us around to basically the workshop is right behind the cave. We go in and he goes through the house rules, which is like no photography, no filming. You will learn some secrets here today. We do not want you to show those secrets to anyone else. Darren is going to be our tour guide today for the Weta workshop tour. Darren is one of the painter here at Weta. Um, he um, worked on props from District 9, he worked on props for World of Warcraft, and he's currently working on props for a movie that he cannot disclose, but I know of. They are currently working on Avatar 2 and 3, so I freaking know that's the one he's working about. He still has blue paint on his freaking fingers. So the tool starts with a gun from District 9 that Darren knows we want to play with, so he's passing the gun around. We are shown the weapon making process on a mass scale. So how do they provide a whole alien race with weapons for movies and still make it look believable? And then we get a sneak peek through a glass window into the Weta workshop, seeing people working behind the scenes as we speak. And then our tour guide gives us some like stories behind the scenes like, oh, a new movie that we cannot tell you about that's coming out soon, but we cannot tell you about it. Had this famous actor that we cannot tell you about who wants to, who says he does all his own stunts, but we can't tell you who that is. And this guy, who we can't tell you who he is, actually was shit and he doesn't do all his own stunts. Well, we can't tell you what stunts they were, but you know, ooh, secrets. 
Then we move on to a section where we actually can see someone designing something on a computer, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then we see a miniature castle that was used in the Chronicles of Narnia, and he tells us some stories about this. And then we get to see in the CNC room, there's a big window, we can actually see there are people working in there. And the CNC machines are carving out, we are, well, we don't know what they're carving out, and we cannot know because they are secret. And we exit not before seeing a lot of different kind of expressions of Kong. All those different expressions of Kong are sculpted in clay and are aligned all on the wall. You know, I ask uh, Darren, hey, why do you do that? Because obviously I know you've done it just on computers, so why do you need those clay? And basically it's just a good point of reference for the computer artists when they were animated Kong in the, in the movie. So that's really cool. And that's what I really like about having Darren as a tour guide. There is just things everywhere. So we, we go through a lot of things and he's giving us a lot of insight, but it's up to us to point out of something and ask a question, right? And Darren is like so, like he knows his shit. So I'm asking him a few questions, he's like telling us everything and I really, really, really like that. And the last thing we think is, is a life-size beautiful Navi. We are in the wetter workshop. Nice, and what did we do, Henriette? We saw how it's done. So the same place, the Weta Workshop, and it's the second tour that they have, which is the Thunderbird Argo. It's the same thing, it's about 25 bucks. And yeah, we'll see what happens. We won't be able to film, but we'll figure out a way to tell you all about the experience and show you some visuals that we got. <laughs> Visual aids of leaflets. Yes. Back when I was younger, I used to go around to my gra grandparents' house and they would have Thunderbirds on sometimes. And basically, Thunderbirds is puppets controlled by puppet masters or puppeteers. Thunderbird is a show I know very little about, but I'm a really big fan of the Weta Workshop work on movies that I care and really love. So what about something that I know nothing about which has been made by Weta? Will I be interested in it and will it wow me? This is why I dragged Laura to the Thunderbird I Go Tour. We first watch a bit of an introductory video, which is kind of handy for me because I've not even seen any footage of the new Thunderbirds. I want to see, like, obviously have some context as to what we're talking about for the rest of the tour, so that's handy. And the movie finishes and Erika is giving us a few more insights and then she's walking us through a little bit more of a genesis of the Thunderbirds. There's a lot of memorabilia, like very old replicas of their uh, spaceship and characters and all of that. And then we move on to a massive wall, which is a kind of a storyboard wall. After the concept art, we are looking at some shelves that Erica tells us is like storage for junk. They are storing junk here because this is the stuff they actually make for the Thunderbirds miniature sets. The sets are made from everyday household items, including spray cans, water bottles, those little eggs you get in Kinder Surprises, which the toys are in, batteries, hair curlers, tubes from old hoovers, computer boards. So yeah, the possibilities are endless with all this junk and we sort of have our our imaginations are going wild. It's all coming together because we're about to see the real sets to the Thunderbirds Argo TV series. So we see their house and, oh my God, it just looks like a massive doll's house, but more epic. Every single detail, we can start to see all those little household items and junk that Erica was just talking to us about. The tools finishes on the high, we see a lot of things and uh, we are going back to the hostel, so back to the Wellington city. My head is in the clouds, just kind of dreaming. And tomorrow, we are going to go out into the wild to see what New Zealand used to look like before us humans migrated. We are going to Zealandia.